very rich color, but it is a bit crushed all the way down to a near like flower consistency. So it takes, we found maybe three, maybe four layers is, is plenty. And especially to do it, what uh, Sean wanted to do with it, which is make it to a, a thread wrap where we will intentionally really thin it out. So I'm just going to layer this up.
this also gives us a good uh, idea what the color is. So I can just pull this out to, that's not even a pencil diameter. I'll chop this off, we can look at that later. Later on, we can, uh, and we'll do that with a bunch of little things. There's a bunch of small pieces. In fact, you see in that back corner, we have all these different colors of small rods and glass. Later, we can crush those down, heat them up, roll them up, and make other items out of this. Tom's going to get this hot and probably start marbling this down, meaning he's going to get this hot and start compressing everything on this steel table. He has a little bit of color laid out. So I'll leave that right where it's at. You put a, pretty, you put a big heat to it. Oh, so this is an interesting effect. If you lay down this relatively cold, crushed up colored glass, it's called Fritz. So Sean picked up some of this blue, this crushed up colored glass. Almost the consistency of say gravel. So he picked up some of this uh, cobalt blue glass oh, right on top. He picked that up on, on top of the trails and it's going to displace those trails slightly. So uh, it kind of pierces its way through these trails and offsets them just a little bit. It's a really interesting effect. You know? I figured he was. Uh, it, you basically only have one heat to do this effect though. Because after you start melting everything in, everything becomes uh, more homogeneous, everything starts melting down evenly. I'll make sure this still plates clean now. What do we get to it? Additional uh, manipulation. Just kind of squeezing everything together with a slight twist. All the work up to this point is doing for color and color manipulation. So, just barely grabbing the surface of that glass. It feels almost like a silly putty or even Play-Doh at this temperature, but it's also rapidly cooling. As the glass cools down, it loses its malleability, so it's becoming stiff, less malleable. It translates to be much harder to work. All right, so it's twisted all that up. Now remember, all the colors we've seen right now are false. This is going to be uh, a very bright green with a very rich blue. All the colors are glowing. And even after they lose that glow, even after it loses that heat, the glass will still be warm enough that it distorts the true color. So we'll never really be able to see this mug's true color today. It won't be until tomorrow before this has a chance to pull all the way down before we can really see what we have. But Sean has made mugs uh, and other vessels like this using the same thing. He has a pretty good idea on uh, just what this is going to look like, but for us, as glass blowers, it's always a little bit of a Christmas morning effect when we come in and you open up that annealing oven and we get to see all the glass that we made the previous day. Cooled down the outside, compressed the outside, inflated just a little bit. And that cooling and compression followed by inflation is a uh, not a really standard protocol for a lot of different pieces that we're doing. Sean, you get a gather on this. It's pretty nice and rich. You can always dump a really skinny foot or something to it if you decide. That's up to you, buddy. I think you can buy without it. You can, you can always put a really nice skinny foot on it. You know, if you're concerned about it. We're going to talk about whether he wants to take another gather, especially in 1950. You're not going to take him skinny gather. Yeah, yeah. Cool too. This is really deciding whether, uh, how much material he's going to be gathering up. Does he need more glass to make this mug? We don't want, you know, plugs, we like to be uh, utilitarian. We want them to be on a little bit of the thicker side. We don't. Uh, you know, it's, it, while we may really enjoy making nice thin, you know, credit card thickness glass, we want people to use these mugs. 
all of our mugs and tableware uh, are meant for cold liquids only. You don't want to put your mug, right? What? You want to like a bigger mug like that? Okay. Yeah. Actually, this particular mug is for these folks right up front. I talked you out of the shop. <laughs> of course. So, we don't like to make these mugs too thin. We want everything to be nice and useful. All of our glass is meant for cold liquids. It's not the proper formula to put, uh, oh, hot coffee or soup in the bowls or anything like that. That's a particular formula of glass that's mostly, I mean, almost basically exclusively, work for mechanized glass or machine made glass. Oh, that looks neat. So one of the things we do here are uh, special mortars. And actually, this mug is for these nice folks right up front. Hi, thank you. Hi. <laughs> we, we really appreciate it. So I'm going to cool this down. It's one of the really fun things that we get to do here. Uh, they've been around for several demos. These come in several times. Uh, mm -hmm. And Steve's been wanting this, uh, a mug like this for a while. Came here to talk to Sean. And about two minutes later, Sean started working on this for So, again, we're going to actually have a mug today. It won't be until tomorrow. But one of the fun things about making glass is that it's pretty immediate. We get to, unlike pottery that said that they may have to cool things down for a part of the cool things down, pottery may have to let things dry out for a week or two. We can make a mug within <laughs> oh, 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. We have a look at what? it. What? Yes, I am. All right, so this is a secondary strip. Off the bar, another good example of glass of elasticity. Full tail on that. What I can do, take this fresh water, roll it on that iron. Man, you can't get it. It's still so hot. In fact, this can cool way down. It's still so hot, it's still moving around. I can take this. I throw it right back in the tank. I'll go on. We're, we're dealing with the duck. Cold glass in there. I don't want to put a big air bubble in there. It's up to you for those big, for those big ones, whether you want. Yeah. I'm going to do a drop in there. So, the glass inside of our number two furnace, Sean and I are talking about, it's actually very cold. It's very cold and it's at 1950 degrees. It's cold to us because our normal working temperature is 20 to 100 degrees. Our number one furnace here is at 2100. So that big gathering glass that Sean stripped off was uh, a really beautiful lens for you clear. This glass is a water blue. At 2100 degrees, we can keep this rotating. It's moving almost like warm honey. So what's going to happen if I stop rotating? Maybe I'll start fall. Yeah, exactly. Right there they are. We can just cascade that down. And it just keeps falling. Now some of this glass is still warm enough when I can pull it and thread it right off. Now while some of that is warm enough to thread right off, other bits of it are completely set up. So this is modern art. $47,000. Uh, I think these bugs go anywhere from 35 to 50. Kind of put things into perspective. Okay, so that little bit that I just threaded off, let's see, is now so cold, I can pick it up with my bare hands, I'll chop off that end. Now, if I did this right, if it's thin enough, I can take this glass and I can tie it. Oh, look to at that. So that kind of gives you an idea of just the, the miraculous properties that glass has. And this is also a very dumbed down version of how they make fiber optic cables by extruding thin layers of glass. And then shooting magic through it, I don't know the way it works in there. Magic. Here in the 1880s, we don't know how fiber optic cables are. Okay, so, John now has that mug. Pretty well blown up. And you saw it, he's 
spent almost the same amount of time doing all that color, layering on color, color manipulation as he has now. Gather that glass and just blown it up nice and quickly. Sean's making a lot of these moves, look really simple uh, and easy, but it's really tough. Glass making is very, very tangy, pointed, and dependent. Sean's going to make glass for about 15 years or so. You don't look a day over 40, Sean. Yeah. yeah. He's cooling down that bottle. So these, uh, these darker specks on the bottle, those are, that's the cobalt. That's the, uh, the really rich blue. So it looks almost that kind of lime green. The top is a very rich uh, emerald green. It's, it's almost the same color for sure, really. Even, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit brighter because we put the, uh, because we put that white backing behind it. And that, that produces uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, it, it, it lets more light inside and it produces a little bit of a back to it. All right, so we're going to get ready to flatten this. So I really concentrate heat on the bottom. And we may take one or two heats. I'll follow his lead. I'll sink that bottom just slightly. Sean also, uh, very quickly, did a real high-tech maneuver of he put a golf tee at the end of the blowpipe pushing it, which is kind of a funny move, but a golf tee fits perfectly at the end of these blowpipes, and it keeps the air pressure neutralized inside there. It provides us a little bit of back pressure that we can push up against. Oh, that's good. Isn't that okay. going to be pretty? <laughs> He's active what he does. I'll get an iron. And I'll put just a small amount of glass on the end of this solid iron. I'll put some heat to this. I'll a damp folded up newspaper. That's just about five or six sheets of newspaper. It's been folded into thirds and then folded back into thirds. Anywhere between say 30 and 50 layers of paper depending on what we started with. And that damn pulled up newspaper is some of our most direct, is one of our most direct changing pools. We'll keep that newspaper damp, not too dry, not too wet. And the idea is that we'll burn it in, and the glass will rest on a fine bit of carbon and steam that that paper produces. I'm working on a small compressed bit of glass made of solid iron. This is called a plexi or a palm. When you rub it. Now this plexi will be a temporary attachment. It's a very fragile connection. It's meant to break off. as we proceed on this piece. Remember, I open them a little bit wider. Can I try to help you? Land it on center? Yeah, I just go. Break that up. Transfer that from the blow pipe to the pipe. That's always a very kind of a tense moment we felt. Uh, because if the piece is going to crack, it's going to crack at that time. Try not to cool it down. Put enough stress into that score line to be able to break that off the end of the low pipe. That connection has to be brought over warm enough that it sticks to the bottom. That is a thermal connection. If we pull around that connection a little bit too cold, the piece will just fall right off. Uh, the piece will just fall right off the connection and off the low pipe. If this connection is too hot, uh, it tends to be really cold at first, and then it can give us problems uh, on the very last step of making a different piece of glass. We need to knock it off that connection. If it was too hot, then it may not break properly. That one was just right. Hold on. He's going to heat that up and uh, address the rim. So no matter what, we always have to address the rim in some capacity or another. You will either 
squeeze and trim, which will fit the rim and even it out, or we can compress it with uh, criteria. It's on a piece by piece basis. But if we just go right to opening up these rims, it's always going to be slightly in here. Press the body first. Oh, these are graphite. What about part shoulders? And here he is going to thread that out. These tweezers. He'll first go around and he just does a series of pitches. And then he's actually kind of pulling to his right. These glass shears are used. Uh, glass shears are most getting to say tin snips. They're basically just a, a low tolerance, low action uh, scissor. And if the glass is just the right temperature, you can cut right through it. Again, that's why these stuff that chunk makes look easy, but it has to be just the right temperature. Dealer's choice, I trust your trust your judgment. Okay. He has to go in, 
and directs the temperature up of the vessel. And does a little bit of shaking to that handle. And you only have maybe one, you maybe have two heats to adjust that handle. Before that, the rest of the vessel starts uh, equalizing the temperature. The rest of the vessel is going to start getting hot and moving. Everywhere, anytime we cut the glass, it's all abrasion is left. We can use those top torches to melt down any light abrasions, make it nice and smooth. Really expertly done. A nice profile out of that handle. It's so pretty. There we go. Yep. Go ahead. Give her, give her a test drive, John. <laughs> we, we like these pulled handles a lot because they're very, uh, very ergonomic. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. One last look at that mug. You can see it's very light and flat heat. Any last bit of adjusting, it's more than any of adjusting he can do. More than anything, he's just ensuring that that is not moving around. Noon 